Don't try to sneak into your room like that. I know what you've got behind your back. Records. More no records. So we worked really hard. Um, the, all the signal path is, is analog. Um, it's beautifully done. It's it measurably and, and uh, acoustically, it's, it's, uh, it's quieter than the watchdog controller. Uh, we're really proud of it. Uh, Luke, do you want to do you want to talk about your gear in here before I could, we? Sure. Yeah, yeah I could. I'll just explain the, the system. Thanks, there. We're doing a vertical biome system with two stereo amplifiers. Um, this was basically the right channel. So one channel of the stereo amp is driving the woofer, and the other channel is driving the four-range speaker. Same on the on the left, in the vertical, which you can do with a, an a identical amplifier. We did it. Uh, 2015, 16, right. with the series with two. Sasha twos, mm -hmm. to great effect in a in a bigger room. So hopefully you'll enjoy the sound of this. So after we're <laughs> we're done talking here, Peter, would you mind playing one or two tracks before we go into the other room? Um, so I'll, I have a few more things to say, but just not to put you on the spot later. I'm going to put you on the spot <laughs> now. <laughs> uh, uh, another uh, so, uh, another oh, oh. exciting piece of news is Wilson Audio has been, for the last year, uh, winding and manufacturing our own capacitors. Um, we had the opportunity arise where um, the multicaps that we were getting from Reliable Capacitor, um, they were looking for a buyer, and so uh, we negotiated with Bass, and we bought all the equipment, all the IP, everything. We built out an area at Wilson Audio, we moved everything to Wilson Audio, we worked out all the kinks brought all the machinery up to Wilson spec and our tolerances are tighter than we've ever seen before. Not only that, we're also manufacturing custom made capacitors that are made, making their debut in the XVX. And uh, we iterated those capacitors just in the short time, this is just the very beginning, but we've, we've iterated over 20 different construction methods and the capacitor we have now is better than anything we've ever heard. And so we're, we're really excited about that being one of the many things in the, in the XVX. Uh, Wilson Audio right now, it's about 45,000 square feet, um, and we're building more. We're expanding the uh, inventory and production, the fabrication shop, and adding four new offices. So it'll go up from 45,000 square feet to about 50,000 square feet. So we're expanding. There's a lot of uh, great things happening at Wilson Audio. Uh, what else is new? So uh, we have our uh, official Wilson Audio history book, thanks to John Diolis. We opened up our archives. He had full access um, to everything over the years, and so pictures that have never been published before in there. John, do you want to talk really quickly about the uh, history book? Yeah, I started this when Dave was alive. Uh, we're courageous, and I said, you know, I'm going to write a history book. It's not going to be a marketing piece. And they said, <coughs> you know, we trust you to do what you do. And um, uh, uh, Dave and then later Cheryl Lee, who proved everything, did not uh, remove or change any of the content I, I chose to include. So, um, and yet, of course, uh, my perspective is from an insider point of view. And so, um, I guess it's a double-edged sword, uh, but it, it benefits and, and is from that perspective. Uh, but uh, I'm happy to have it done. It occupied a lot of my life, and, and uh, I, hope, I hope, I think everybody, but Ingo, I have one here for you, um, you. Has, has theirs, and I, and, I, and I appreciated the feedback that I received uh, from it. That's it. Anything else that you think of? There's no one in the world that could have written this book better than John. The amount of attention to detail and how, um, how carefully he handled the subject matter it's a it's a work of art, and I really appreciate everything you did with it. It's it's a fitting tribute to um, the first 45 years of Wilson Audio, and um, building upon excellence. The next 45 years is a project we should be talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, and uh, so that's available on Wilson Audio's online store through our local dealer network. Um, we also have another new thing that we're uh, introducing with the XVX, and it's a new color palette. It's a new process that we've done. It's uh, kind of a pearl s type of process, and you'll see uh, the uh, it's the Olympia. Uh, Pearl, is that the official name now? Olympia? So, Olympia Pearl, Saffron Yellow Pearl, Cranberry Pearl, Violet Pearl, and Bergamot Orange Pearl. And they're on display here. So you can see. Right here. 
We worked with a paint manufacturer, and, and um, once again, our, our process of uh, empirical R&D, of iterating and testing and, and going over process after process to refine it, um, it, it took a long time to get where we're at, but we're very pleased with the color palette that we have. Um, so, with that being said, Peter, do you want to play something here before we walk in? And when you see it full scale, the depth of the color comes through. Um, the white, though, for showing all the subtle curvature and the machining that goes into this and the architecture um, and the artistry that I'm hoping to put across, it really shows off those lines well. Um, and why not show the wham next to it to give a little perspective? How many people have actually been next to a wham? And this is something I know my dad. We <laughs> got raised in this. I think almost everyone in here. Yeah. But as far as a, a consumer show and people coming through, this is a work of art I know my dad wanted other people to experience. And um, it's not feasible in a show like this to really set up, especially rooms this size. Um, but to at least show scale. Um, the only two problems with the Wham were um, how tall it was. In Asia, we actually had customers say, I can't stall it in my room. I want it, I'll buy it, but it's too tall. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so that, that was one of the challenges. And then the price, too much. Now, the Wham does come with the Master Subsonics as a system. It's a, it's a full system. So, uh, so it's a challenge accepted. Um, this, uh, the XDX is six foot four, roughly, give or take, depending <laughs> on the spike. So this is the speaker version of me. <laughs> um, and that was one of our goals. We had to do some very creative things to get the overall height, because you still have four modules, and each of the sub-assemblies still have to be adjusted to a very fine uh, resolution. So the top of the woofer is actually machined down and we've developed a brand new material that adds um, a kind of a layer like the ISO base for the tune tot or like the bottom of the, uh, the, the flatbeds for the micrometer system. Um, and so it, it provides the whole gantry system with another uh, layer of damping. Um, on the side, we have uh, the uh, grills, which are attached via magnets, so it makes it a lot easier to take them off. And then the architecture here, open like the Wham, um, where pressures aren't building up in the back. Um, if you guys want to come in around it, it's pretty impressive when you get it in close. This is prototype still. So like this is flat blacked, the, the cable clamps and everything. The, uh, the collaboration with Cool Fall Lights, which is a handcrafted uh, high-end light, um, specially made for this product, uh, he's, he's calling it the Sonos One, uh, Sono One. Um, is, this is just a prototype in here, so the finished work is not what it will be like on the, uh, the finished units. But everything, the cable system, um, it's all uh, redesigned. We actually engineered and, and redesigned the spades that we use for uh, the connection method on the back for a better uh, connection with the wire to spade interface, and then the interface between uh, the spade uh, uh, tangs the, uh, and the bottom of the, the binding post nut. Um, so that's all redone. Uh, we've got a carbon fiber housing, full carbon fiber housing that's an eighth inch thick uh, carbon fiber for the crossover. The crossover, this is just the upper crossover, the woofer crossover is in the bottom, but this potted and uh, completely assembled is 45 pounds just by itself. Um, that, that eighth inch thick uh, carbon fiber is something special. And, and then when you put all that potting compound, it's, it's like a rock. Resolution on this system um, is equivalent to the WAM. The time domain resolution. Yeah, yeah time domain. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, the um, there's a new material. We're calling it V material, which is underneath the the gantry system, and it's also embedded underneath the flatbeds of the micrometer. So if you want to set up your system and you need a little bit of illumination, because we all know audiophile rooms, they're really bright, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Um, so just flip that on and um, there's one light on top and one light down here. We only have one prototype for the show, but it gives an idea of some of the shape and, and the brightness. It has three brightness settings uh, with rechargeable batteries inside. Uh, the first setting is about two lumen. It, if it's left on, um, either intentionally or accidentally, it's about 70 to 80 hours operation. Um, if it's on its full setting, uh, it's about 30 lumen and it's about 24 hours continuous. So it's a, it's a few inches taller than the XLF, um, but um, it's much shorter, as you can see, than the WAM. Same woofers as the Alex and the WAM? Correct. Yes, same woofers. We have a brand new mid-range. It's an Alnico driver with four um, Alnico slugs. And um, we had to iterate this driver. This is one of the last projects my dad uh, and Vern and I were working on. Um, the first iterations, we had three slugs thinking that would be enough. It, it just didn't have the sensitivity we needed, and it was too slow, it was, it was too colored, it was, it, it just, it didn't have you know, what we were looking for. We needed it uh, higher sensitivity, and it needed to have that sweetness uh, with low distortion. So uh, with the four slugs on it now, it's, it's beautiful for the lower mid-range. And then the uh, four inch um, is, um, it's a uh, variation of the four inch found in the WAM. And then the tweeter, uh, the front firing tweeter and the rear firing tweeter are the uh, Mark V Convergence Energy tweeter, same as found as in the WAM. Is that a different tweeter from the Alex? Uh, yes. Yes. That's uh, a Mark III. The OCD in me saying I can't just leave two on. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much here, um, and I'm happy to talk about any of it and all of it. Okay, no one's asked. What's what's the price? Three hundred and twenty-nine thousand. The goal was between. Um, it, it for me, if it was above three fifty, um, it just it prices itself, you know, too stratospheric, um, and I wanted it under three. But as John says, Daryl can't help himself. And so as we were designing and developing it, it's like, oh, let's put this in here. Let's add this. Let's do custom light. Let's, let's change the cabling. Let's develop this thing. Let's have uh, two micrometer systems instead of one. Hey, let's develop a new material. You know, thing, you know more and more and more things. And um, because of the, uh, the amount of time that went into developing this, um, and I mean, it's, there's going to be a low volume of it. People are always asking, why is it so expensive? Why are, why are speakers or audio gear so expensive? You'll think we're not car manufacturers. We're not putting out tens of thousands of these where you can roll in the expenses like them. These are handcrafted and they, you know, they're built to order. Um, so I couldn't help myself. And I kept on adding stuff. So 329 is, is the uh, current MSRP. Stunning achievement. It's, Absolutely it's it's harder to explain, but if I snap my finger, you close your eyes, you can point right there. If I move it one inch, you you hear it move one inch, right? Um, so for us, timing and resolution in the time domain is so critical to preserving those very delicate waveforms. 